I'm, I'm lost. Every house looks identical, and there are countless narrow alleyways leading off to God knows where. There's no one around to ask for directions either. <laughs> no, I'm not crying. I'm just freezing cold. Oh well, guess it's come to this. Dine! Dine! <coughs> yeah, this is one way to go. Pride? I tossed that aside a long time ago. Dine! I'm not gonna yell. Oh, I can just do this. Dine! Speak into my hand. Oh yeah. Right on cue, a man appears from down a back alley. Thank goodness someone's here. Excuse me, I got kind of lost. Could you show me the way to the Ohara Resid? <laughs> he takes one look at me and he flees. Why is he running away? <laughs> What's going on? First a man comes out of an alleyway and now a girl? She stuffs the water bills into her pouch, then spits onto the ground. Oh, she's seen me. <coughs> Is she out hunting for sugar for sugar daddy? Uh, I'm not an old man. Okay. She's clutching my arm. <laughs> Why is she leading me down that back alley? I've got no idea what those are, but I have a bad feeling about all of them. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have any money. I can't escape. No, no, I, I really have... I really don't have any time for this right now. Sounds sort of tempting now. Nope, never mind. Uh, I don't remember. The girl stops in her tracks. Oh, could this be my chance to make a run for it? <laughs> uh, I have a feeling it's closer to 20,000 years. So he kind of remembers. <laughs> S seriously? <laughs> but she's still just stuck still. It doesn't look like she's going to make a move anytime soon. <laughs> hey, is it really bad enough to cry over? In any case, she let go of my arm. Time to take my leave. Sorry, I really am flat broke. Ask someone else. Why am I the one apologizing? <laughs> Damn, I can't just ignore the kid when she's crying her eyes out. Oh yeah, I might get some money starting tomorrow. I don't want anything for it. Just wait here tomorrow if you want some. <laughs> I take another look at the girl. She's covered in dirt and her clothes are full of holes. Oh, they are. Her hair is matted with grease. Her hair is mucky and slick with tears. And her neck. Her neck is missing her collar. Hmm? I feel like I've seen her somewhere before. Ah, you were the one out in the front of the church today. The look in her eyes changed instantly. There's a butterfly knife in her grip. Why? What's up with this thing of butterfly knives? She's crazy. He plays a lot of CSGO. <laughs> Wait, a knife? Kashing. <laughs> Whoa, that was close. I'm still in one piece, but my jacket wasn't so lucky. <laughs> I told you I'm flat broke. <laughs> I'm backed into a corner. When did that happen? Is this it? Is this? Is there any way out? God, 
help me. This time, I don't set with an eye instead of a knee. Amazing, cut in, cut in, cut in, cut in. I'll call it Karin. Cut in, turns away and flees the scene. <laughs> Thank god. <laughs> Lip dick. The girl vanishes into the darkness. There's a knife in the spot where she'd been just standing. It seems too large for a child to wield. I pick it up and tilt my head to one side. The name's Karen Kurus. Wasn't it Kurusu? Man, they're like keeping some stuff. Is etched into the blade. Karen. Karin Kurus? So she was the girl I bumped into at the park. And also the given orders. And the one giving orders to the kids at the church. We seem to be keep running into each other somehow. Before that, though... What to? <laughs> it's freezing. I just want to go home and take a nice hot bath. Not long after that, a man in church rose found me and escorted me back to the Ohara residence. Along the way, he gave me gentle talking to about licensing and diseases. I'm pretty sure there's been a grave misunderstanding. In the end, he patted me on the shoulder and said that he'd introduce me to a good place next time. When I asked if that sort of thing was allowed for a man of God, he laughed and told me he was just a guard. He then launched into a passionate spiel about brother specializing in more mature women housewives, women housewives, through, though I don't remember much of it since that's not really my cup of tea. She's a groovy was Still, what a dangerous place this is. I didn't think I was simply walking down the street could get you killed. Really though, I'm worried about Ninne, who went wandering off outside on her own. Still, she did say that she was born and raised here, so I doubt she'd venture into any treacherous places like that. <laughs> She's here. Um, just getting some fresh air, that's all. I couldn't bring myself to admit I got lost looking for her, so I ended up lying. And it's not the kind of story I want to tell a kid. Never mind. Were you able to patch things up with Nerfan? Taking a glimpse at the table, I spot five empty bottles lying there on their side. He's a sad drunk then. It's a vicious circle. <laughs> she smiles cheerfully and directs her gaze at the door at the, ne at the back. Peaceful snoring rings out from inside. Dine rolls up her sleeves and begins collecting the cups and plates that were left on the table. Let me help. These bottles, um... Where should I dispose of them? Fifty thousand yen for one bottle? Definitely seems that things are priced a bit differently here. <coughs> when I hear a huge number like that, I start sweating all of a sudden. <laughs> ah! The bottle smashes to pieces at my feet. Fifty thousand yen. Got only an instant. I'll work like a dog for the rest of my life. Please don't sell my organs on the black market. Before I know it, I'm down on my knees, my head on the ground. <laughs> Dine stopped sweeping up the glass. Not the slightest hint of distaste showing on her face. S sorry. <laughs> She suddenly takes my hand and puts my thumb to her lips. Just, just leave it. it, it's dirty. She's an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I 
When I get my thumb back, I notice it's still bleeding. Hmm? There's a similar scar on the same on the same digit. Uh, uh, this hasn't happened before, right? Dune's voice brings me back to reality. She gestures to the door between her room and Nervon's. Looks like this will be my place from now on. Uh, uh, I can't even see the floor. The moment I open the door, random junk spills out all around my feet. <laughs> what was it you were saying about being enough space to sleep? No, that's yours. You were a brother and sister though. You only met me today. Oh. Hmm. I'm only going to make things more difficult at this rate. <laughs> Where did you hear that word from? What have you been teaching her, old man? Wait, she must be talking about the tale from the scriptures, right? Their holy text is the Kama Sutra? Now I get why people's values here feel a little off. It seems like Din has misunderstood my response, and she's now steering the conversation away from the topic. I'm getting the sense that her values might be even more askew than most. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to be a part of this household from now on. So, when in Rome, as they say. So, do you mind if I take a bath first? I'm actually really cold. Why do I have the accent? <laughs> there isn't a bath in this house. What kind of services do they offer? <laughs> Hold on. Is that supposed to be amazing? <laughs> nah, come on. That's un that's unhygienic. Dine takes the inside of her jacket and sniffs at it. She suddenly buries her face into my chest. Really? I I don't know about that. <laughs> Dine nuzzles me, sniffing away. It feels like it feels kind of ticklish. <laughs> you, you pervert. She's puffing her cheeks out again. I wasn't aware that royalty had a distinct body odor. <clears throat> I'd say the clothes I'm wearing now are weirder. Like you'll want to talk. I wonder if I can live alongside this widow for the rest of my life. <laughs> that kind of thought gives me goosebumps. She then points at the single bed like it's a completely natural arrangement. Uh, I'm afraid I have to decline. <laughs> I wasn't refusing because of that. That wasn't me, I told you. I feel like I've hit on a sore subject. But she's getting way too close to me for comfort. I wonder what Nervan would say if he saw me in the bed with his granddaughter. He told me to drop the sun when we were drinking earlier. Did, did what? <laughs> I 
so so does that mean he's acknowledged me that's not good at all anyway the floor will do fine just give me a blanket then what do you suggest <coughs> oh aren't those my clothes over there I'll just lay on I'll just lay them on the floor this book will do as a pillow and okay good night I sweep the junk on the floor to the edge of the room then flop down and in, in the empty space Ugh, the chill of the floor penetrates through my clothes suddenly something soft and warm smothers my entire body is this a blanket? I act up to investigate. And find Dine soaking. I wonder what she really means. I've clearly upset her somehow, though I don't really understand why. She goes to extinguish the flame of the oil lamp before I've had a chance to say anything. And with a puff, the room is shrouded in darkness. It's pitch black, not even a stray beam of moonlight through the window. And I'm struck on an uncomfortably hard floor with only a thin moldy blanket for cover. While right above me I can hear the sound of someone tossing and turning instant incestantly. Incessantly. It feels strangely nostalgic, but I have no idea what this reminds me of, which I find weirdly frustrating. Rene. Uh, no, uh, huh? What was I gonna say? You are cold. I'll, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a blanket back. <laughs> Setsuna, huh? Hey, Dine. You understood, you understand, don't you? I'm not Setsuna. I'm about to put this, I'm about to put this to her, but then panic and bite my tongue. It's not worth getting into. She may be slacking off in common sense, but she's not an idiot. See you again tomorrow. She's already asleep. <laughs> not a care in the world. But... Good night, Dine. I have someone to say good night to. Someone I'm sure will still be there when I wake up in the morning. That in itself is a small reason to be happy. Then... Maybe... Life is just about accumulating these little slivers of joy. And perhaps those tiny slivers of joy, virus so small you might not be able to notice them until they're gone, ultimately waver, ultimately weave together to form a brilliant tapestry. I suddenly wake up in the middle of the night. Actually, I have no way of telling whether it's the middle of the night or almost dawn, but my body stubbornly refuses to shift. She's aware that it's been too long since I fell asleep. Then why am I awake? Been not too long. It's not as if I had a nightmare and I'm dealing with cold well enough. I'm not freezing at least. It was just bad premonition I had. An omen of some sort. I need to pee. Oh, where's the toilet? There's no bath in this house. Don't tell me there is no toilet either. In any case, there's no way I'll be able to find her in this dark. Hmm? What's that sound? Jeez, who's kicking me in the crown jewels? <coughs> she continues out, quietly creaking the door shut. Her footsteps fade into the distance. I think I see some lamplight peeking through the door, but I immediately, but it immediately disappears, and the room is still dark once more. What's that girl doing up at this time of night? My mind springs back into action. Oh yeah, the toilet. Wait, didn't it? I, I need to go to... Huh? Where's she gone? I follow the light of her lamp, but get lost in an hour alleyways on the way. Is the nearest toilet really that far away? Oh crap, my blood is at its limit. There's nothing for me. There's nothing for it but to leave myself in this gutter or something. Oof, made it. Guess the tank was full because I've been holding it in for so long. But having emptied it out all in one go, I feel kind of chilly now. Two! All of a sudden, I'm blinded by a dazzling light. When my eyes finally adjust to the brightness, I find someone standing there. Setsuna? 
Oh, oh, it's Yurine. Dinne. Wait a second. I'm not quite done yet. Jeez, it's hard doing this with you staring at me. Whew, that's better. My bad, my bad. It was an emergency. What are you doing in a place like this, anyway? Dine's face stiffens for a moment, then looks up at me. Is this the sort of thing you can't tell anyone else about? Hmm. Got it. I won't tell anyone, promise. She smiles sweetly. Did she do that on purpose? Is she trying to manipulate me? Well, there's no point in worrying about that now. With Dinna leading the way, we arrive at a large tunnel that's been bordered into into the perimeter wall of residential district. <laughs> the light bulb hang hanging from the ceiling are dead. The darkness stretches on and on into the distance. We soldier on, guided only by the lamplight. There are several bumps along the way, but it's essentially a single path that we follow down the tunnel, despite several narrow branching passages. We encounter dust-wreathed heaps of ore everywhere we look. They've been sitting here for years. Actually, I bet it's a long time since anyone's entered this tunnel. At some point the ceiling has caved in, making our passage extremely narrow. This is definitely not a safe place to be. Just what on earth are we doing? Dinne comes to a halt and raises her lamp up high. Gleaming in the lamplight is a thick metal door. Perhaps the door is the wrong term. It's round and only large enough for one person to pass through. So calling it a hatch might be more appropriate. Next to it is a control panel with a little red light for the operating hatch. For operating the hatch. This must be one place that's connected to the grid around here. It certainly radiates a very different aura to the bare rock and dirt around the tunnel. Of the tunnel. <laughs> Setsuna, Dine's older brother? She presses her hand against the door as she speaks. The door into summer? Does summer lie beyond this door? A world of endless blue skies and oceans? Ah, so that's what it is. That's right, there's no way it could be somewhere on this side. Not in this frigid climate. Regardless, Dene reaches out to me with a smile. I take her hand without a single thought. I don't know why, but I somehow feel like she really may be able to take me there. <laughs> I crawl forward on my knees through the pitch black tunnel. Hey, Dine, how much further? <laughs> it's so narrow that not even light of Dine's lamp reaches me. The only option for me in this darkness is to follow the soft outline of Dine's butt. Hearing it in my head now, though, that sounds kind of pathetic. Whoa, why just double all of a sudden? Just as the tunnel widens enough for me to walk on two feet once more, a whole new world suddenly opens up before me. A great expanse of white. I've never seen so many stars shining in the sky. Even the snow is glittering silver in the light. Despite the dark, I can still make out the mountains in the distance, oddly enough. My deep, perceptive perception is all over the place, but the snow-capped peaks look just like rolling cloud, rolling waves. The only difference is that they aren't moving. There's no sound, no movement. It's almost as if time itself is frozen in this realm of white. Is this? When I breathe in to speak, my lungs fill with fresh, clean air. The cold is piercing, but also strangely pleasant. It's like my body's being cleansed out. Dine smiles cheerfully, her back to the silver white plains. The white of her breath rises up and dissipates in the air. 
She stretches her arms as wide as she can and spins around on the spot. It's like she's trying to hold the whole world in her arms. I see. That's what makes you Princess Dinne. Dinne Hime. <laughs> if this world belongs to her, then she, she's its princess, no mistake. Princess Dinne, maiden princess of the night. It, it's nothing. But she must have noticed, right? There's nothing to be found here but solitude. Huh? Dine dashes down the slope, leaving fresh little footprints every step of the way. Hey, it's dangerous. Hey, it's dangerous to run around about like that. She slips and plunges headfirst into the snow. Dine! I lunge forward without thinking, but my foot sinks deeper than I thought it would. Whoa! Whoa! Two of us collapse in a heap, then roll the rest of the way down the slope. And when we finally stop... Oh... This, they just reusing a scene from Island, legit, like, the act. <laughs> it would have been good if they actually made it a moving one. That would be nice. Looking up, I find an impressive trail of tracks leading straight down from the mouth of the tunnel, up on the mountain ridge. Dinne, are you okay? She laughs and laughs, lying spread, eag spread eagled on the ground. Figures a kid her age would still find, still be fine after that. I, on the other hand, feel dizzy after rolling around so much. <laughs> she's laughing her head off, flapping her legs around and kicking at the snow. It's not like she's putting on some kind of performance. She's genuinely having the time of her life. Just seeing dinner like this makes me laugh too, strangely enough. There's nothing for it. But, to go back on what I said earlier, this world is not one of solitude. That's her, Dinne and me, Setsuna. That alone should be enough to get this world moving again. She flops face first into the snow. <laughs> Her acting so wooden. Don't go making up dialogue. I couldn't have said dinne or anything like that. I never met you before though. Let's just say I did then. I'm not going to win against Her Royal Highness. The princess's word is absolute after all. I told you, it's top secret. You can hear me. But... That's right, she told me her secret. This world belongs to her and she shared half of it with me. It wouldn't be fair for me to say anything. It wouldn't be fair for me to not say anything. Truth is, I don't remember. How should I explain it? I really don't know a thing. A lie? The world makes my heart the word makes my heart twinge. Dinne, who's now staring intently up at me, looks at a looks a little saddened. It wasn't a lie. Isn't this just another flimsy cover so I don't end up disappointing her here and now? Or is it based on some fragment of my memories which should have all but disappeared? I can't tell what reasons are I can't tell what my reasons are right now, but there is one thing I'm fairly certain of. There was something. Something I absolutely had to do. Something I had accomplished I had to accomplish. That's how I truly feel when I see her face. I think I had a mission, a mission more important than my own life. But I can't remember what that was. It's stuck in my throat. I, I can't form words. It 
this should be right in front of my eyes, but I can't see it. I can't reach it. It's so tormenting. I feel like my heart's about to burst from my chest. Before I know it, Dinay's standing on her tippy toes, on her tiptoes, her hand resting atop my head. Huh? Will you forgive me for forgetting the most important thing in my head? Would you believe me if I told you if I told you I could still make things work? Would you, Rene? No, I'm not crying. <laughs> I have a runny nose. Must be the Peruka effect acting on. Damn, what's with this kid? I can't believe this tiny little girl's comforting me. No, no one's looking, right? You're okay. Just you, though. Is she getting too close to me for comfort? No, I'm the one who's being too distant. I feel like she can see it all. The thoughts I can't verbalize, the dreams I've lost. I'm glad. I'm glad you were the one who found me. Though maybe I only feel like that because she's the one who happened to find me. Even if it had been someone else, I bet I'd still think my rescue was special. No, that's not true. I don't know why, but there's something different about her. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You're right. Leaving it at that, Dene turns and leads me away. In the opposite direction of the tunnel entrance, that is. Come to think of it, what are you doing out in a place like this? Are you these are these nightly walks of yours a hobby? I ask frantically trying to catch up with her. Looking for something? Don't tell me, you're missing brother? Then what? She suddenly crouches down and whips out a spade from her pouch, then starts digging in the snow. That thing she's holding, is that a human skull? Actually, on closer inspection, it looks like it's just some metal object in the shape of a skull. Wow, its eyes flashed red. Starting initialization sequence. It, it talks? Starting assassination mode on. Amazing. She slaps the metal dome like she's trying to bring an old television back to life. But the light in its eyes fade and the skull falls silent. Robots? Nope, 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 nope. Can't imagine a robot made being this creepy. I wonder how much of that can be believed. But the skull does look very well made. Even if it's just a toy, I can't fathom the kind of technology they'd have needed to manufacture it. Dine pulls out something resembling an electric, electronic circuit from the skull and puts it in her bag, smiling contently. I see, so your hobby is collecting junk. So, what was that thing for just now? Uh-huh. Turning her back to me, to the mask, turning her back to me, to the mask, her slip of her tongue, to mask the slip of her tongue, she starts digging in the snow again. 
She is really hunched over. Something tells me that she isn't just this isn't just a hobby for her. In which case I'll help too. A spare pair of hands always helps, right? I drop to my knees and start burrowing through the snow. This is nothing compared to the collapsing out here in the snow. I'll just have to bring the right equipment tomorrow. Hmm? You do this every day, right? For whatever reason, Dines smells really seems really pleased. She breaks into a smile, emitting a cloud of white breath. It's just the two of us here, in this glittering realm of silver. Digging away in the snow with no idea what we're searching for. What are we trying to find anyways? Hmm? What's this? I put out something hard to touch. The device is small enough to hold in one hand. It has a little LCD screen, some buttons and a hole from the speaker or mic. Nah, it's just a regular old cell phone. The brand name is even on the power button. She hasn't heard of a cell phone before? Well, true, it doesn't seem like they have any on the island. It's a cellular telephone, cell phone for short. She doesn't even know what a phone is? She doesn't even know what a phone is? Um, it's a machine that lets you talk to people who are far, far away. I don't know anything about any BM what's it, but it sounds like she's on the right track probably. Nah, doesn't look like it. It doesn't even have a battery pack. Like dry cell batteries? Never heard of them. The item she takes out of her pouch to show me is a small metal cube, about one centimeter across. The size and shape of the object, not to mention the little round holes on each side, make it look like just a dice. She's carefully put the tiny battery away and resumes her excavation. One second she's oblivious to stuff that I'm familiar with, and the next she's spouting out total googly bo- gobbly- gobbledy gook- gobbledy gook, like it's make perfect sense. Is my memory loss the only reason th for this huge discrepancy in our knowledge? Or is my amnesia just a symptom of something else? Where on earth did I come from? Why am I here in a place like this? Hey, Dine. If- you mentioned a blueprint, right? If I'm not mistaken. Just what are you... Dine stops digging for a moment. She's got a real disarming smile. It's very good at putting you at ease. Well, never mind. Following Dine's lead, I resume my search. She told me that my... She told me that my dream would come true someday. So I'm sure I'll find what I'm looking for too. The things I've forgotten, the things I've lost. Oh, what's this? It just looks like a regular old flashlight to me. Nah, that's just a water gun. <coughs> Whoa, some kind of weird way shot out. Is is this the real deal? Seems a bit extravagant to be used as a ray gun as Lido. Ugh, I have no clue how much anything's worth here. I don't think it's a shrink ray anyway. The bulb is broken and the battery's leaked, so I don't think it doesn't look like we can use it. Why do I keep finding these bits of trash? At least give me something Dinne can use. Oh, I found something. Ah, it, it's just a mirror. It's an object I'm perfectly familiar with, a car's, a car's wing mirror. But it's broken at the base, and the glass has cracks in it. Dinne's eyes light up. She's clearly excited about something. Is this one of the things she's after? 
Here. Here you are. I tuck it towards her. Dina clumsily catches it. And peers at it wide eyedly. Wide eyed. Like she's seen a ghost. What's the mirror for? She's not listening. Well, guess it must be pretty important. Hasn't she ever looked in a mirror before? Nah, when you point it at me, all I see is my scruffy, some scruffy dude's mug. I thought you were meant to have some brains on you. Oh, quite the looker. Yep, we're right, pair of numbskulls. She hugs the broken mirror to her chest, wearing a smile as bright as the sun. I can certainly see the value in a magical in a magic item that grants her vision of the smile whenever she wants it. Dine wraps her arms around mine and then warms them with her breath. My fingers had completely gone numb from the snow, I hadn't realized. I'm sure you know more. That was my first time seeing a laser gun or whatever it was. The two of us walking along side by side following our tracks back through the snow. The path we must now follow made up of tracks we left before. That's great. I have no idea what she's making, but I'm sure the one that once she's finished it, my work here will be done. I don't know why, it's just a feeling. And then once I'm done here... Huh? Dine's been staring straight ahead to where the tracks lead. Up towards the top of the slope to the slightly ajar door into summer. Hey, Dine, what do you mean, everyone? It's then that I feel it. My toes bump against something hard, also bringing me toppling over. I pick it up. It's old and completely rusted over. But it's unmistakably a, port a portable cassette player. Wh what? Why is this here, of all places? Uh, no, it's just... Just what? What was this thing? Uh, I press play, but nothing happens, as I'd expected. The tape's still inside. If I can get my hands on another cassette player... But how can I, in a place like this? You, you can fix it? I ended up grabbing Dine's shoulders in the heat of the moment. Probably is good enough for me, please. I make Dine hold on to it. This remnant of my lost memories. Huh? I briefly choke up. It, it it's it's not mine. Whatever's recorded on here, whatever feelings are enclosed within it, none of it belongs to me. But the only one the only one now able to accept those feelings. The only person left in this world who's capable of that. Ah, that's it. It's me, right? Who else can save her but me? Saving her? Is that my purpose here? Her? My- <laughs> Dine pretends to roll up her sleeves. Her smile is just so pure and innocent. I saw her manage to escape back through the pitch black tunnel after Dine and returned to the residential district. But not bothered by the slightest by her dirt street clothes, Dine curls up into a bed like a cat and I do the same on the floor. The fatigue hits me like a brick wall and I sink deep into thought. Too much happened today. My body's tired of course, but it's my head that really could do could do with the rest. It said that we need time to sleep for my brain to process. What's happened during today? I guess the world is just too complicated for us properly to comp properly comprehend. For that for the brain to take in new information, something else needs to be forgotten. The problem is deciding what to keep and what to throw away. The steady rhythm of her breathing calms my nerves. I'm wary. 
that she's being too trusting with a guy she's only just met, but... I'll fess up Dine. Truth is, I didn't wake up earlier because I needed to go to the bathroom. I also wake because I was scared. Scared of losing sight of what I need to keep and what I ought to throw away. But then you showed me a world outside the island, and now I've found it. I think I know what I have to do. Shut up, phone. Okay, I think we're gonna stop here because it's like three something and I'm tired as hell. So, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. I gotta edit this real quick. Goddamn. See you guys next time.